Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotac and Apple released iPadOS 26 Beta 2. iPadOS 26 Beta 2 is available to developers and iPadOS 26 Public Beta 1 will be out in early July according to Apple. Now this update came in at about 2 gigabytes on my M4 iPad Pro 13 inch and was released alongside many other updates with iOS 26 Beta 2, WatchOS 26 Beta 2, along with many other updates such as macOS 26 Beta 2, tvOS and HomePod OS 26 Beta 2, and VisionOS 26 Beta 2. Also today, Apple also released an update to AirPods Beta as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go to general, then about. As you can see, the build number is 23A5276F. This particular build does add some new features, changes, and updates. And the first thing that they've updated has to do with ringtones. If we go into our sounds, thanks to having the new phone app, if we go back into sounds here, go to our ringtone, scroll up, I'm not sure why it opens halfway down, go under reflection, we have the default one, but now we have alt one. So let me go ahead and turn the volume up here so you can hear it. We'll turn it up, here's default one, or default. Here's alt one. So that's the new sound as far as the ringtone goes. I'm not sure why it's called alternate one, maybe they'll have an update to the name a little bit later. There's also some updates with wallpaper. Wallpaper for iOS and iPadOS 26 now can use the parallax effect. If we press and hold, maybe we'll go and add a new one here. So give it a second, we'll add a new one. So you'll see down here, we'll add this one, but also something else is they've brought back collections. So if those weren't showing for you, they've brought them back. But let's go ahead and add the default wallpaper here and we'll go ahead and hit add. We'll just customize home screen, hit done, and then go to our home screen. The overall parallax effect is back. You can see it there, especially on the lock screen. And something else you may have already noticed is when we were in the wallpaper, if we press and hold again, let's get rid of this one. We'll delete it for now. We'll then go ahead and add another one. You can see under photos, it says 3D if they have parallax effect option. So you can see those here under nature where they have some different options where you can change those. There's 3D and there's a little bit more context for shuffle and other things. Now, one thing you may have already heard is that the contrast has been updated when it comes to the control center and some of the liquid glass elements. So it's a little bit easier to see what's behind it as it blurs it a little bit more. You can see that in the control center here. So scroll down, it's a little bit easier to see them go into the different modes, you can see that here. So they're changing the overall translucency and background blur to make it a little bit more easy to read. And they'll probably change this again before it's released to the public. Spotlight search also adds some of that element to it. So we have that glass look behind it here. So again, if we pull down, you'll see behind it, there's that sort of liquid glass design there. So a nice little update there as well. Notifications also seem to have a little bit different blur there. So you can see that odd effect that comes in, they sort of shoot out to the side and you can see it's a little bit easier to see the overall text here because it blurs the background a little bit more. It's more subtle when it comes to the notifications though. However, if you don't like this look at all, they've updated reduced transparency as well. If we go into settings, we go under accessibility, then we go down to where we have display and text size and then reduce transparency. If we scroll home, go to our control center, you'll see it's much easier to see now. So again, another update there where they've updated it, made it a little bit easier to see, depending on what you're looking at, they've reduced it in the background to make it less translucent. So you can turn that on if you'd like to. Another thing they've updated has to do with increased contrast. If we enable that, you'll see automatically everything now has an outline. So you'll see the outline there. If we go into something such as music, wherever I put it here, let's go into music. We'll go into music here and you'll see again, everything is outlined at the bottom to go along with that translucency still with liquid glass. So it just makes it a little bit easier to see. And if you want to bring this back where you can swipe back and forth, you can actually turn off the windowing system, which I turned off. Not everyone's going to like that, but if we go to multitasking and gestures, I have it on full screen apps as that's how I prefer to use the iPad for now, but I'll use it windowed when it's connected to an external display. So you can still swipe through things if you want to do that. Another thing to go along with accessibility has to do with apps. If we go into the app store, maybe we'll just select Amazon Prime Video. We'll go into the app itself, scroll down. You can see here we have a placeholder for those new accessibility 
nutrition labels that Apple's bringing with iOS 26. So it says the developer has not yet indicated which accessibility features this app supports. So that's something coming in the future, but now there's placeholders for it. Now, if we take a look at battery, we'll go into settings, go to battery. The battery graph seems like it's updated a little bit and definitely a little bit faster when you plug something in. However, we don't get the same information we do when we plug in an iPad as we do with an iPhone. So if we go ahead and plug it in here, so let's do that. We'll plug it in just like that. Give it a second, it just says charging. It's pretty instant, but we don't get the same information even on the M4 iPad Pro. So that's something that's a little bit disappointing, but you'll see the battery graph is updated a little bit. And overall, we'll talk about battery life in a little bit here. As far as music goes, well, music, I showed you some of the translucency has changed, but another thing they've updated is a new widget. If we press and hold, we'll go ahead to go to edit here. There's a nice new animation when we hit edit as well. So. I'll show you that one more time. It just sort of pops out there. If we add a widget under music, one of the new ones is pins that was in beta one. But if we continue to scroll, we have live radio. We can add this widget and now we have live radio, although it's not updating properly, but that will open right up here. It works on iOS as well as CarPlay. So you have those widgets available. So if you wanna go into it, you can then go right into the live radio options. If we go back into Safari, they updated this quite a bit on the iPhone side, but not so much here. So you'll see everything looks mostly the same. If we go to the side here, go into our menus, they really haven't changed a whole lot here where they've brought everything down to the bottom in iOS 26. So not a whole lot of changes here, but of course you can go into your different tabs and things, open those up like normal, and it's basically the same. We keep getting this extensions option here where we can browse those. But again, if we go into Apple, you'll see it here. It looks mostly the same compared to the previous version. However, when we go into the phone app, there's a new option here. So if we go into our phone app options and you'll see that widget finally filled in, but if we go into our settings, go down to apps, under apps, go down to phone, under phone toward the bottom, we have a new option for detect call waiting. It says iPad will detect calls you can put on hold and notify you when it's time to pick up. So that's something that's been updated so you can detect that on its own. And it goes along with some of that information with screening incoming calls and move to unknown callers. So the call filtering options have been updated. We'll screen those and keep that on. To go along with phone, if we go under cellular and scroll down at the bottom of cellular data, we now have the option to transfer to Android. If your device has an eSIM, it says transfer your eSIM from this iPad to an Android device. If we tap on transfer, it says place your devices next to each other, place your Android device next to this iPad to get connected and begin the transfer process. Once you've connected, you can transfer your cellular plan. Make sure your devices are running the latest software, connected to Wi-Fi, and have Bluetooth turned on. So that's something more that's new. And then you can, of course, learn more about this under Apple's support updates with more information. So that's great that you can easily transfer. I know not everyone's seeing it, but if you're on T-Mobile, you should see this and some other carriers. If we go into the map app, there's an update here. So within maps, you'll see on the left here, it now says places. So it's no longer a library or locations. It's now places with enlarged icons. And then of course you have recents and more. So you can utilize places if you'd like. It remembers where you've been and then gives suggestions about those as well. One of the updates many people have wanted for iPad for some time is the journaling app. While it's here with beta one, it wasn't really syncing properly with iCloud. It now should be working properly. Some people were getting splash screens here. I didn't get one, but if I go to make a journal entry, you'll see it's just working properly. And then you can sync everything and it's synced everything I had before from places to insights, entries, and everything else. This did sort of work for me in beta one, but it looks like it's working properly in beta two without having to sort of go in and out for it to resync everything. There's also an update with Apple intelligence for chat GPT. If we go under settings under Apple intelligence and Siri scroll down to where we have chat GPT within chat GPT, it now has advanced capabilities with image limits and other requests. This is something that's new if you're not signed in. So if you are signed in, you'll see your regular limits, but if you're not signed in and it's set up to use, you'll actually have those limits here and it will give you more information as to what you can use. There's also a new mode found in iOS and iPadOS 26 that allows for recovery. It has a recovery mode that can reboot the device and try and find issues if there are any to restore your device without actually erasing everything. And also recovery assistant can allow you to restore 
from your iPhone or iPad without using a Mac or PC now. So that's something that's new. Thankfully, I haven't had to use it, but maybe I'll set it up on a new device, see what it looks like, or see if I can get it to enable on its own. Now, Test Flight also gets an update to its icon. So they've updated just the icon for it. The rest of the app seems to be pretty much the same. And overall, the update itself has just small changes throughout when it comes to visual changes, things such as the camera settings work now. So if you go into maybe video and you want to change some of the settings, they now work like you would expect. So 4K, HD or whatever you're using. So definitely an improvement this time around. And as far as bugs and bug fixes, well, there's quite a few in this one. It seems much more stable so far. And if we go into Apple's release notes here, so their public facing release notes, you can see quite a few new things that are actually resolved. So lots of things resolved for iPhone and iPad here, along with known issues with AirPlay. If we keep scrolling, you'll see there's hundreds of updates, known issues with maps, known issues with the menu bar, resolved issues with messages, for example. Some of the backgrounds work a little bit better, but still there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Apple's aware of it as far as the known issues here. And if you are having a problem, make sure you report it in the feedback app and let them know, but be sure to check the release notes too. see if it's a known issue. If it is, they're already working on it. If not go to feedback, submit feedback and let them know. Even if you don't like a design, that's an option. So you can let them know about that. As far as if you should install iPad OS 26 beta two, I would recommend against it if you don't already have beta one, but if you have an extra iPad, that's not a main device that you're doing work on, you can try it out, but I would recommend you wait for the public beta. That will be out fairly soon. We can go to beta.apple.com and you can sign up there if you're not already. So I would wait for this if you're not already testing it and just let it get a little more stable unless you have an older iPad to try it on. As far as the overall heat, well, on the iPad, I don't notice any at all. On the iPhone, it's definitely less than what it was before, but it's still processing a lot in the background here. Battery life, like I mentioned before here, if we go into battery, well, let's go back, go down to all usage. Yesterday, I had one hour and 40 minutes of screen on time and used about 37% of the battery. So not bad, but not great at all. So I'll probably get about three to four hours of screen on time. It definitely can improve from here, but again, it's an early beta, so I don't really count that against it. We'll talk more about that though in the weekend follow-up. As far as storage, quite a few of you have asked me to look at storage on multiple devices. So let's load that. We'll go to the bottom here. You'll see system is taking up almost 20 gigs. That's okay. It's cache data and goes up and down as needed. And if we go into iPad OS, Apple intelligence is taking up 6.59 gigabytes. iPad OS is 14.63 gigabytes for a total of 21.22. So right where it was before, for the most part, around 20 gigabytes. Yes, that's a lot, but this is a one terabyte iPad, not too much concern here. And of course that other one is going up and down system data as needed. It's got a lot available, so it's going to use what it can. As far as benchmarks, let's go ahead and run those. I haven't run those on the iPad just yet. Let's see if I can find Geekbench here. We'll go in. Now I ran Geekbench a couple different times and it crashed. That happens sometimes on the latest betas and the app is probably not at fault. It's probably just not updated or optimized properly for iOS or iPad OS 26. So that happens from time to time. I know some banking apps aren't working properly and some other major apps sometimes still have some issues as Apple doesn't really take the submissions of the updated apps until it releases to the public, typically in September. Now, as far as the next release, well, iPad OS 26 beta three will probably be around July 7th, since that's two weeks after its release. And then the public beta could come out soon after that. So it depends what Apple decides to do, but so far this is turning out to be a pretty solid beta as far as performance, reliability, and the way it's working. So I would expect that we'll have additional betas throughout the summer with a public release, usually in mid September. So that's what we can expect. Usability though seems to be pretty good, but again, it's still an early beta and it needs additional work. Let me know if you've found anything else in beta two in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time. <laughs>